1998, the whole Tabasco fiasco thing. I don't even know where to – what went wrong? Um, crooked car owners. Okay. This is, is the bottom line. Um, what could have – what could have been oh, battery on this thing? Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, what could have been the best deal in the sport turned out to be a joke, a, a, the, literally a joke. The Tabasco fiasco. Uh, Tabasco, great, great people, great family, and it's family. It's still family today. Um, you know, and they these owners had. Talked them into coming to racing, and they came to me as the driver, and I said yes. It was the largest sponsorship in the sport at the time. The problem was they were the two owners for, were from IRL. Uh, they they liked Indy cars, so the got the spot, and I find all this out so, couple, several years later. They they got six million dollars. Uh, they took a million dollars right off the top and bought a jet airplane. Then they took, so now we're down to $5 million. They took $2 million and gave it to their IRL team to race the IRL series. So now we got $3 million to run a cup team on against teams that are spending $5.5 million. $5 million is $5.5 million. We got three. How in the hell are you going to be competitive? Yeah. You can't be. They bought a bunch of junk cars from Jack Rouse, uh, the Pontiacs that Chad Little had raced before, and Chad struggled with them. I mean, what, what do they think we're going to do with them when Chad can't drive them? And Mark Smith was doing the motors, and his, his hands were handcuffed. He had very few good parts, a bunch of junk motors, and we had one good car and one good motor, and we put them together for the first race at Atlanta on the repave when Jeff was on the pole at over 200 mile an hour, and we qualified third. I think we finished eighth. I mean, we had a good run. So we had a good team. We just didn't have the pieces to do it because the owners spent all the damn money on other stuff. Now, did, were you aware of this at the time, or is this – after the fact, basis had an understanding that that's probably what happened. After talking to Pat Trayson was the crew chief. After talking to Pat and finding out how handcuffed he was on what he could buy and what he could do, and talking to Mark Smith, and finding out how handcuffed he was, yeah. it's like okay, where is all the money at? And all of a sudden they have this diamond jet that they're flying around in. It's like. And they have an IRL team that says Tabasco on it, and Tabasco didn't sponsor the car. So you kind of put two and two together and say, okay, they've they've spent all the money. Was it a relief when you left? See ya. Uh, it kind of. <laughs> a relief, but disappointing. Oh, yeah. And it was disappointing because Tabasco, you know, they let me go about halfway through the year. And Tabasco had already spent $3 million on marketing me. And the, the CEO of Tabasco, he came to Charlotte for the, for the 600 and didn't have anything Tabasco on, just him. And he walked around the garage area, and I had several owners and crew chiefs tell me the same exact story, so I know it happened. And he went to, to car owners and crew chiefs and other drivers and ask them all, you know, told them who he was, and said, look, can, what's wrong with my team? And every one of them told him it wasn't the driver, that they need to look at the owners. So that next week, Tabasco found out on Twitter that I was fired. They never even called the, the sponsor to tell them they were changing drivers. So, yeah, it was a bad deal. But it was a relief to not have to get in that chip box and try to make something happen. We we missed, like, I don't know, we tried to run 12, 12 or 14 races somewhere in there, and we missed half of them. Yeah. Didn't even make the races. Yeah. It was that bad. 